before we get into this development framework, I just want to preface this by saying there are so many different ways to do something in Excel. This is what worked for me. So please consider that as one of the ways you can make it done. And once you get into it, you may actually develop your own framework that works best for you. In an overview, the framework is very, very common framework. Input, you receive input from the users, you process them or do the calculations or process the inputs, and then you generate the output and present them. The guiding principles for me as I've been developing templates is that I want to focus first on practical features that address real life needs. So for example, you're working on a business solution, it needs to actually address the problem that the customer is facing or the need that the customer has. So continue to focus on the adding the features that will only solve any specific business problem, not just because we can do it in Excel, we don't want to just stuff it in. Uh, so we always try to keep this in mind when we develop the solution. So it needs to be effective. Number two, make it as easy as possible for the end users to use this solution as well as learn how to use the solution. We don't want it to be very complex for the user to learn. We don't want it to the user to do five clicks to do something when you can do it in one. So keep focusing on the simplicity for the user. Behind the scenes, it could be more complex, but we're not going to show the complexity to the users. The users are not going to um, feel the complexity. They're going to get the benefit of the simplicity on the front end. Number three is always developing with the plan to extend it or expand it. This is something that I've learned, um, that I learned initially when I started developing templates, that you, the different customers have different needs. And so if you make it too narrow at the beginning, it'll be very difficult to expand it uh, to meet the customer needs. So develop with a plan so that you can expand it. Uh, for example, if you're developing for a certain number of employees, so keep in mind that the number of employees could be more in the future. So keep in, keep that in mind while developing and document how you are developing. This kind of goes along with the developing with a plan because the more you document, then you can come back and easily expand it or improve it in the next version. Listen to customer feedback and improve. You publish something or you develop a solution and get customer feedback and then you will learn how the customers actually use it and then continue to iterate on the product and keep improving it. And you'll probably ever always keep improving it. There's no end to it, but be open to receiving customer feedback. Now let's go a little bit deeper into these steps. First, let's go into the data inputs. In all the applications, you will need effective methods to receive user inputs. And here are the ones that I use more frequently. And um, I and let me quickly go through these. The radio button is where if you have a di three different options here. So if you have a few options and you want the user to see those options, then this would be a good way to receive the input from the user. The list box kind of does the same, but if you have a long list of values, but you still want the user to be easily able to vis visually see it, a list box would be appropriate. But keep in mind that the list box is going to take up more space. And so that's where the drop down list comes in, where you don't need a lo lot of real estate or space that you take away from the screen because it is a drop down list. The other thing you will notice is that you can actually enter um, instructions to the user, which can guide them to enter what is the correct value that they should be choosing. And then also you can enter error messages as well. Now table, this is probably the most used feature in Excel that I use. Almost all, I, I'm going to say all the applications that I've developed use Excel table in one form or the other. Um, as inputs, it actually plays a huge role in processing as well. But whenever you want to get a list of customers, list of employees, list of products, whatever it is from the user, always use a table. And it has huge benefits. Uh, learning Excel tables will, will take you a long way in terms of developing applications. Checkbox is something that I often use where I want to have like a yes or no flag or in or out kind of thing where I have a simple toggle that will change from yes to no, no to yes. And in, I, you, you would have seen that I've used this, for example, to get the weekends, uh, which days are weekends, Saturday, Sunday. So you can use in those type of scenarios, checkboxes. Keep in mind that these input methods overlap in their purposes, some of them allowing you to choose whatever your preference is. The choice sometimes is based on 
how much space do I have on screen to fit this input method, uh, and also how much formatting control you want, and also sometimes it's just personal preference. People can choose one method over the other because there's some overlaps. Now let's go into the processing uh, techniques now, or the second stage of our framework. Now let's go to the second stage of our development framework, which is to process the inputs. Um, there are so many things in Excel, so I want to give you some things that you can start get started with, um, which I use more frequently for my templates. So hopefully this will help you to quickly get up to speed and get a, um, some applications created. Named ranges or the name manager. When developing in Excel, use named ranges where it's nothing but you can give a name to a cell or a group of cells or a formula. And by using the named ranges, the formulas are so much easier to read and also to manage. The second thing would be relative or absolute references. When writing formulas, you will soon realize that for the formulas to be efficient, understanding the different reference methods. So you can use relative or absolute or mixed references um, in your formulas. Learning this will help a long way in making your formulas more efficient and you can reduce the number of formulas that you use, number of unique formulas you use uh, by using the right type of references. Pivot tables is the next one that I would recommend whenever you're handling data input from the users, which is dynamic. For example, um, today they may have 100 employees, tomorrow they may have 105. So the inputs are dynamic. So using um, a pivot table approach can help you do dynamic summaries of the data, which can be done without pivot tables, but it can be less efficient in many cases. So pivot table, definitely one of the things that I would recommend um, learning and becoming good at. Array formulas is something that I would recommend. It's a little bit more complex, but I ended up using them um, to do certain operations that I had to do for my um, templates. So I would recommend you to check out array formulas as well. Definitely check out Excel is fun video uh, YouTube channel. They have you know great videos about this, which are you know as as complex the uh, the topic is, but um, the videos are uh, will make it so simple enough so that you can actually follow and test with some examples and get going. The other thing I would recommend is using hidden sheets. Um, we use hidden sheets almost in every template uh, because not that we want to hide um, any kind of secret from uh, our users. Uh, all of our templates, like when we, you know, uh, whether it's a free template or premium template, we provide access to our customers to the all the hidden sheets and everything. We give them the password um, so you can um, see everything. So we don't intend this to be um, to hide any kind of secret, but it's more for me a way to manage the all the calculations away from the user's fingertips so that they don't by mistake change a formula because if they do then it will actually impact the accuracy of the application and also just doing all your back-end calculations in hidden sheets makes it easy in development as well so those are the reasons i would recommend um, using hidden sheets whenever you're developing applications in excel and finally last but not the least it's all about the functions right this is where all the magic happens uh, i have listed here the 25 of the more commonly used um, functions in my case. And please note that if you're in a certain industry like finance, the functions that you may use may be completely different. Um, so these are the these are the functions that I use, for example, in the, all the examples that we saw today, as well as in most of the applications or templates that I've published. These are the most common ones that I used. And that's why I want to give you as a, as a beginning set of functions that you can become good at Obviously, there's a lot more. Each function has a different purpose, but if you can get started with these 25, you will go a long way. And also, it's all about choosing a good combination of these functions to create the necessary operation or um, objective. And it's all about how do you combine these things in a magical way to achieve what you want to achieve with the input data and create the output data. With that segue, let's go into the output and the third and final stage of our development framework. I have listed here things that I would recommend for you to 
learn in order to make the output or the presentation layer as effective as possible. Um, obvious things, charts, so definitely look out for the column charts, the bar charts, and the line charts. Those are the ones that most often use. And also the pivot charts, it kind of goes along with the pivot tables where your it's where your inputs are dynamic and it's changing in length. Um, pivot charts can help uh, a lot because you don't have to um, do a lot of extra work to make your charts dynamic because it'll automatically happen. Custom formats, Excel, one of the beauties of Excel is that it is displaying to the user a different thing even though the value could be same. For example, a same value can be displayed as a month number or a month name or a year or a day or a date or a week. Day. You can do all that, but the underlying number is the same number. So learning how to show the information or the display the information to the user in different contexts will help a lot when it comes to presentation. So definitely learn formatting and custom formatting. Uh, conditional formatting is so effective to communicate something to our end users visually um, you know typically try to show different colors or different icons which will immediately give the decision to the user rather than letting them think about what the number means and all that you're immediately visually communicating the decision or the action that needs to be taken very effective uh, same with spark lines um, it, it just is another way of taking less space but still communicating what you want to communicate and finally, slicers, um, this is where when you have a lot of different um, dimensions in your data and you want the end user to be able to slice and essentially filter the data in different ways. So you create one dashboard and let them slice rather than create a lot of different versions. So slicers will, will make that very, very effective. I've listed here um, the formatting checklist. Obviously, in, when it comes to presentation of, or output, formatting plays a huge role. These are the 10 things that I look for when I'm actually developing uh, an application. And I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna go through this, but it's pretty obvious you know, what they mean. So definitely check these out. I'll be, I'll be making this file available for you to download so you can take a look at the details later. The release checklist is something that I follow before we publish something or before we finalize a certain uh, application or a template. You would, I would recommend doing something like this where I test all the formulas, I test and make sure that all the named ranges are working, I make sure that the conditional formatting rules are correct and working, I check all the formatting, I make sure that the print previews, if I have printable sheets, they are print set ready, um, I protect the sheets which I don't want the user to inadvertently edit, so I protect the sheets as needed, I hide all the help sheets because I don't necessarily want to keep them visible, and then add instructions for the users, uh, how to use it wherever you can in the template, and dev, um, complete your developer guide. So developer guide is nothing but how you develop the application so that you can go back later if you need to make an addition, make an edit. Um, it doesn't, it shouldn't take you a long time to make edits. So it's always a good habit to have a developer guide uh, for your own use as a developer. And finally, the name of the file and being consistent with versioning uh, if you are going to work with your customer and provide um, multiple files, so being consistent with your file names. So these are the things that I follow before I publish a template on Inzara.com. So now using this framework and uh, these concepts, what have we done so far? And just a quick um, a minute or so about uh, Inzara.com, we have been able to improve the decision making, remove manual errors, and reduce the stress, save time and money for so many customers. We have had so far 850,000 free template downloads and 11,000 premium customers who paid and downloaded the template and used it to get the benefits. And we continue to focus on high quality templates, continue to be a trusted source for our partners, as well as provide dedicated support to our customers, whether it's a free template or a paid template, you get our best customer support. And we also continue to make these templates with our objective of developing simple and effective solutions which are easy to use and affordable. If you believe in our philosophy of simple and effective Excel templates, please reach out to us. We are looking to hire Excel developer who can help us with executing our template roadmap. Uh, we will provide you a link to where you can submit your applications if you're interested. We would, like, we would love to hear from you.
I sincerely hope that this session has been helpful to you in at least a small way. Please share your feedback with me at inzara.inzara.com or you can post it in the comments below. I look forward to connecting with you in the future. My best wishes to you and all your future endeavors with Excel. Thank you very much for taking the time.